All I have to say is wow. The more and more I scout the 2024 quarterback draft class, the more I get impressed. I would say I'm a pretty tough critic. A frequent comment I get on my scouting videos is that I'm too nitpicky with my opinions on players. I think a lot of these guys are so close in talent. So yeah, I do split hairs. NFL franchises are leveraging their future on these 21-year-old kids. So every little thing does matter. But I have to say, so far, I've been very impressed in my evaluations of Michael Penix Jr. and Bo Nix. And to keep the trend going, I think my favorite so far is Jaden Daniels. In his two seasons at LSU, Daniels has put up some insane stats. He's completed 70% of his throws for almost 7,000 passing yards, 57 touchdowns to just 7 interceptions, over 2,000 rushing yards, 21 rushing TDs, a 19-7 and record, and, oh yeah, I forgot, he won a Heisman in 2023 while losing three games. That's almost unheard of. Daniels is the one quarterback in this class that is a true game changer with his rushing ability, which partnered up with a very impressive display of throws in 2024, which makes Daniels easily a contender for being claimed as the top quarterback in this year's class. Sure, he's not perfect, but God, there is a lot to love. The reason people say that I'm a tough critic when it comes to scouting rookie quarterbacks, it's for the simple fact that I feel certain quarterbacks don't make NFL throws all the time. They kind of settle into a select number of routes. I want my quarterback to be able to throw everything in the route tree. And Jaden Daniels does that. Someone like Bo Nix, for instance, does not. I did not see Bo Nix really throw a lot of vertical seam routes or a ton outside of, you know, maybe curls and a few out routes. I didn't see many corner routes or really a ton on the outside level of the field outside of the hashes. But here you'll see Jaden Daniels make throws all day. Like right now, we have a throw here where I go, oh my goodness, this timing. Malik Neighbors is one of the best receivers in the entire college game. And look at this throw. Jane Daniels gets the ball out to him before, you know, he even turns around. He's still making his cut. And here it is again at the top of your screen. Napers, once again, at the top of your route. The ball, here he is, gets his route, comes back, right in his gut, waiting for him to make a play. The big thing with timing routes like this is I want the ball in my playmaker's hand. Malik Neighbors was one of the best, you know, yak guys in the entire NCAA. And here's that throw again. I want the ball in his hands because I want them to be able to make moves after the catch. And that's what Jaden Daniels did time and time again. He set his receivers up for success. And now that I showed you some curls, let me show you some out routes. Now, of course, I'm showing you the one where the guy falls down. But let's be honest. If next year, Jaden Daniels is playing for the Vegas Raiders and he's throwing this to Devontae Adams, I say, hey, man, great throw. Now, you could tell me that this is a little off on the timing. It might be a tad bit late. And if you do, I say, okay. And I raise you, look at that accuracy. I mean, it's away from the defender on the outside to only where his receiver can get it. I mean, you can't ask for more on an out route like that. Get the guy, the ball in his hands and let him make a play after the catch. Now here's an out route at the ball of your screen against Florida state. Jane Daniel stands tall in the pocket, gets it to Kyron Lacey and look at him make moves. That's the thing with LSU. Their receivers are so talented, just get the ball in their hands and let them run. And that's what Jane Daniels does. He gets the ball in his hands, lets them make two defenders miss, and scores a touchdown. Now, I don't want to show you every single play against Florida State, but here's one that I really liked. Here's Jane Daniels throwing to his tight end. Here, it's a little bit different of a formation, and like I said, I'm a sucker for Jaden Daniels and all my quarterback prospects to throwing multiple routes in different situations. And here you have your tight end who is basically in line with his hand in the ground, but gets up and runs a nice, you wouldn't say an option route to an out route. And he hits him right in stride and lets him get the first down. And here's a route that Daniels threw pretty often as well. And that's the comeback route here. He faces pressure and against Florida state again, he throws to the top of the screen and it's Malik neighbors coming up with this catch. And the two things I love here, one, he handles pressure great. He doesn't bail out on this throw. He stands in and takes a hit. And two, he gets out with good timing. You know, Jane Daniels was in his bag during this game. He was on fire. And here just shows what he could be at his top. A quarterback who could throw with timing and doesn't get phased by pressure. All right, so now let's talk about what I said earlier. Let me see my guys stretch the field a little bit more. 
other than your basic curls and slants and out routes. This is a corner route. Now, not so crazy, but the two things I love on this play, look at the timing. Jaden Daniels, you'll see it zoomed in. He's releasing this ball before the receiver even makes his cut. I mean, that is just elite timing that you simply can't coach. It's not taught. It's just natural. It's something that each quarterback has. And the second thing, which is huge, Jaden Daniels knows how to read a defense and he knows how to manipulate his defenders. Here, he looks to the flat for his tight end underneath, which freezes the defender that could have bailed back and dropped back into coverage and picked this throw off. But instead, Daniels looks underneath, then looks vertical and gets his corner route before the safety can actually backpedal and get to the ball. That's a veteran move. And here's another corner route. And it's one that I'm impressed with because, you know, it's nothing special, right? It's nothing crazy, but it's all about timing. And Jaden Daniels doesn't have a huge arm, so he has to get the ball out quick. You know, he's not gifted with a Bo Nix or Michael Penix, Caleb Williams arm. He just doesn't possess it. Not saying he has a bad arm, but generally, you know, it's not like he has a rocket strapped to his arm or chopped to his shoulder. It's He doesn't have it. So it's all about timing. So seeing him get the ball out to the corner and not make his receiver run out of bounds or do a toe tap or anything like that, letting him catch the ball and make a play after is special. And this is one of my favorite throws from Jaden Daniels. Here he drops back. And the thing that makes him such a complete quarterback in my eyes is look at this throw, right? The accuracy isn't perfect. You know, and I said earlier, he's not a perfect prospect, but the things that make this play great are two things. One, he stands in the pocket, and he is never, ever, ever, ever phased by pressure, ever. This guy will stand tall in the pocket, and if he needs to run, he'll run. But if he doesn't need to run, he'll stand tall, and he'll look for a receiver downfield. And the second thing, like I said, he doesn't have a rocket arm, so he needs to get the ball out on time. And here it is. The receiver's going to do a, basically a post and then cut out on the defender once he bites, and Jaden Daniels gets him the ball and lets him run after the catch. That's exactly what I'm looking for. All right, so now that I showed you a ton of throws to the outside, let me show you some throws over the middle. And here against Ole Miss is just a beautiful crosser. And the thing that I like about this play is it shows off his arm that he can get the ball on a line. You know, I know I said earlier that he doesn't have the biggest arm. It doesn't mean by any stretch that he has a weak arm. And here, I love that he gets this ball over to linebackers. You know, that's layering. You know, you have to layer passes. I've seen it plenty of times when quarterbacks try to make this throw completely on a line where you have no touch and you're not going to layer this ball over a linebacker. And I've also seen it where, you know, quarterbacks try to put too much air under the ball and they sail it over this guy in the middle and a safety picks it off. This throw is perfect. So when you're watching this play on TV, you really think it's nothing special. You know, you say, oh man, I've seen Jared Goff in the NFL hit this throw a thousand times, right? All it is is a simple crosser to uh, Kyron Lacey. That's all it is. But it's not. Jaden Daniels is great at manipulating defenders, and he does it time and time and time again. And here he does it with his eyes. Here he's looking at the left side of the field to Malik Neighbors, who's basically going to settle down between three defenders. The whole time, Jaden Daniels is staring down Malik Neighbors which forces the defender in red to help shade over because he says, well, Jane Daniels hasn't looked anywhere else. He, I'm just going to jump this and pick it off. But the second he does it, the second that defender shifts over, Daniels flips to the middle of the field and has a wide open Kyron Lacey for a nice catch. All right, and this play really isn't anything that crazy. I just want to show off his arm and show you that he really can make throws all over the field. Now, like I said, it's not an absolute laser. He doesn't have the Anthony Richardson arm from last year, or like I said, the Bo Nix, Michael Penix kind of arms where the ball pops, but that doesn't mean he has a bad arm. You know, I saw a former LSU quarterback kind of have the similar arm strength to him and it's working out for him in the pros and that'd be Joe Burrow. You know, I feel like I saw Joe Burrow make this throw a million times at LSU and in the pros. So Jane Daniels has plenty of arm to make throws over the middle of the field consistently. All right, so here's a play showing Jaden Daniels stretching the field vertically over the middle of the field. Here, Malik Neighbors is going to run a seam route, and Jaden Daniels just puts it in a great spot. And the thing that I like is that he puts touch on it once again for the millionth time. If you put this ball too flat, the linebacker that I have highlighted in yellow is going to be able to tip this ball or maybe pick it off. So the fact that Jaden Daniels has enough timing to get this ball out with touch to layer it over that linebacker is great. And here's another seam throw that I really like. He does all the things again. He stands tall in the pocket. 
He layers his ball over a linebacker so it doesn't get tipped. And he lets his receiver catch and run. I love it. You know, when you look at the All-22 film or the view from the backside, you will see if he leaves this ball way too downfield, that outside corner will be able to make a play or the inside safety will come over and make a play. So the fact that he fit it right in between a group of three, four defenders is really awesome. All right, and now I want to show you one of Jaden Daniels' go-to throws, and that's just going to be a slot sluggo over and over and over again. He doesn't matter if he's on the 20 or if he's on his own 20. You know, he's going to throw this ball over and over again. I have 10 examples of it. I'm not going to show you all 10 because I don't want to be here all night, but Jaden Daniels delivered on this throw over and over again, and I'm going to show you a few examples. All right, so let's break it down. Here at the top of your screen, the slot receiver is going to run a sluggo. He's going to fake like he's doing a slant, and then he's going to run up, kind of like a fade route, towards the sideline, but get away from his defender. And the big key to this play is Jane Daniels has two reads. He either has to know that number 11 is one-on-one, -on -one, or if the defender at the top of the screen who's defending the outside receiver starts to drop back in coverage, Jane Daniels needs to know that, hey, he's double teamed, and I need to get the ball out to the sideline. But here, Jane Daniels drops back and look at the location on the ball. You know, one of the things I'll talk about later as a, if you want to call it weakness or a weaker part of Jane Daniels game is consistency with accuracy. And here, hey, that's an accurate ball. All right. And Jane Daniels is basically making the same throw, except we're on the 10 yard line this time in the red zone. Here, he's going to read the defense once again. He's going to see that number 11, Brian Thomas Jr. beat his defender. And he's also going to notice that hey, that outside defender that's guarding the receiver at the top of the screen is playing man-on-man. -man. He is sticking hip-to-hip -hip with him. He is not bailing in coverage. So I know if I throw this to Brian Thompson Jr., who's 6'5", that he should be able to go up and make a play, but still, this ball is right over the shoulder in the back corner by the pylon, toe-tap, touchdown. All right, and here it is again to Malik Neighbors. Here, top of your screen, he's going to do basically the stop-and-go and then he's going to hit it to the back pylon. And this ball is just put in a great spot for Malik Neighbors. Over the shoulder catch, toe tap, touchdown. So easy. Over and over and over again. All right. And like I said, I could show you these plays all day. This one's a little different. This one is just a complete jump ball in the end zone. And I mean, seriously, look at the placement. Look at the placement. Putting this ball up top for your 6'5 receiver to go up and make a play. I mean, seriously, you cannot put this ball in a better spot if you tried. This ball is perfect. I am so in love with Jane Daniels. So one of the throws that I think Jane Daniels does struggle with the most would be kind of just deep shots, deep goes down the sidelines. His location isn't always perfect, but here, that's a pretty good throw against Florida. You know, they're up three points, and he sticks this throw to Brian Thomas Jr. You could say maybe a schmidge behind the receiver. Typically, you want this kind of out in front, but still a good location. And then here's another deep shot to the bottom of your screen against Georgia State. Here, Jane Daniels drops back, gets one-on-one -on -one coverage, and bombs it to Brian Thomas Jr., just another great ball. This one falls right in the bucket, right over the shoulder. Like I've been saying all video, let your receivers make plays. Let them catch and run. All right, and then here's the last deep shot I want to show you. This one is just absolutely perfect. He kind of does a bootleg going to the left, but flips his hips and then fires it downfield. And this ball falls perfectly for Brian Thomas Jr. Just a beautiful, beautiful throw. All right, so now let's focus on Jaden Daniels actually reading defenses. And here, it's another one like I talked about earlier, where it's just a simple crosser to Kyron Lacey again, right? But it's not just that. It's always more than that. Here, they're basically doing the slot sluggo again at the top of the screen. But what you're going to see, unlike before, the slot sluggo isn't open. You know, the safety in the corner that was supposed to be one-on-one -on -one with the outside receiver bailed. They all went to drop coverage. So the inside corner or the slot corner bails out and covers the outside receiver. So this means both those routes aren't open. If Jaden Daniels goes and says, ah, Malik Neighbors isn't open. I'm going to throw this ball quickly to the outside. That's an easy pick six. But instead, he stays calm. He flips back to the middle of the field and he finds a wide open crosser. We've all just seen the super athletic quarterbacks like Jaden Daniels who does well, my slot fade isn't open. My go-to throw isn't open. I'm going to tuck it and run it because I'm so athletic. But he doesn't. He makes another read and then another and finds a receiver.
All right. So this next play against Grambling State, I mean, Jaden Daniels gets this ball out so quick. And that's what I'm so excited about. Here you see all the matchups. But the two I really want to focus on is Chris Hilton Jr. at the bottom of the screen in yellow. He's going to run a post. And the second, the absolute millisecond that that defender in red, who's the safety, who right now we're going to assume is going to be dropping back in coverage. You know, they're probably going to split the field in half between the two safeties. That would be my assumption. Play some cover two. But that is not the case. As the play develops, and I'll show you in the next freeze frame, the millisecond that that slot receiver runs an out route, and you see the safety dip, Jaden Daniels gets the ball out and throws a bomb. And it's just how fast he can make this quick progression read that makes me very excited for him at the next level. All right, here is the biggest thing that won him a Heisman Trophy, and that's his legs. Here, he's just going to do a 48-yard touchdown QB draw. He gets it, and he is gone from the jump. Number four, the safety takes a terrible angle, and that just shows you how fast and quick Jaden Daniels actually is. Jaden Daniels is the only quarterback in this draft class that is a true home run hitter, touchdown threat every play, and it's because of plays like this against Florida. I mean, he's making defenders miss. It isn't that he's just fast. He's quick. He's elusive. You know, I don't know if he's Lamar Jackson quick, but this guy is a legitimate threat on the ground. I mean, that is a 48-yard touchdown followed up by a 50-yard improv touchdown, not even a designed quarterback run. And probably the biggest thing that I love about Jaden Daniels' athleticism is that when he runs, it's not always improv or QB designed runs, right? It's a mixture of both. Here, big play threat. He houses this 86 yards. Name another quarterback in this draft class that can outrun safeties and corners and get an 86-yard touchdown. You can't. Jaden Daniels is a one-of-one one in this class. When I watch Jaden Daniels play, he just reminds me of Jalen Hurts. I mean, seriously, the RPOs in the red zone, that's how Eagles quarterback Jalen Hurts gets 10-plus touchdowns a year rushing. He does this time and time again in the red zone. This will easily translate to the next level. All right, I can't talk positive about Jaden Daniels all video long. I waited until the 17-minute mark to start talking about his negatives, but here we are. So now I want to show you some things that hold him back from being probably the number one overall pick in this year's draft. And the big overwhelming thing is his play-by-play -play throwing accuracy. To me, that was the biggest thing that I saw in film that really holds him back from being a true overall number one overall pick talent. All right, so it's basic plays like these where you just have a simple out route. And I talked very highly on his out route earlier in the video, but now, like, this is an easy miss against Army where you just need to hit this throw. Here against Florida State, like, this should be the easiest check down of his life. It's wide open. There's really no pressure in his face at all. And he just airmails it, you know, where if you just get this ball to him and let him run, you get a first down. But instead, it's over his head. And here's another throw out to the running back where you go, man, like if you could just get this in stride, that running back turns the corner and at least gets the first down, but it's behind the receiver. And these kind of throws, man, when they're bang, bang like this, if that defender was closer, if you throw it to the inside shoulder like that, that is an easy pick six in the NFL. So he has to get this ball out front and let his receiver run. And here's another throw against Grambling State where I go, Dang, man, like that is just so easily a touchdown, right? You're getting to Malik Neighbors, who is the yak king. And if you could just get the ball in his hands, I have no doubt he's either outrunning that safety or he's doing a Reggie Bush cut across the field for a long touchdown. But you just missed him. And here against Auburn, you know, he draws back and it's a good throw, right? Like it's a great intentions. It's just the ball's a little bit behind him. Sure, Malik Neighbors should have probably caught this. It was on his back shoulder, but... There's no reason that this throw should be behind him. You could have hit him right in the chest, and it could have just been an easy touchdown. You're celebrating in the end zone, going up seven points against Auburn. And here, this one just kind of kills me, because honestly, this ball should just never be missed. At the end of the play, Malik Neighbors is outrunning this defender by almost 10 yards by the end of the play. The defender literally gives up. Like, you'll see him at the end of the play. He stops running. He just says, I got beat. It's over. But... If you just throw this ball, 
you know, maybe don't put so much air under it. And I think it comes back to not having the biggest arm, right? If this is Caleb Williams, Caleb Williams can probably put this on a line or at least a line ish where this ball just gets away from Jane Daniels. You know, he puts a little too much air under it. It hangs in the air too long and drifts out of the back of the end zone. And all right, there's one more thing I want to talk about. I think Jane Daniels is obviously a crazy athletic prospect. You know, I just saw you the highlight runs that he had and how he can make guys miss at the second level. But the one thing I don't want him to fall into a habit of is when he's starting to get going on the ground, don't always look to run. Now, I think he does a good job of making sure he stays in the pocket and always isn't always looking to run. But there are times where once he decides to run, throwing down the field is out of the question. He automatically turns into a runner. And like you just saw in this play, this is what he could be at his peak. If he can get outside the pocket and make throws downfield, there could be free runners going everywhere because of how dynamic of an athlete he is. But you'll see on this play against Alabama, here he decides to take off and run, which I'm fine with, but he doesn't keep his eyes downfield and he misses an easy crosser that would have been a bigger gain than the you know eight yards that he got on the ground. All right, so if you're still with me at this part of the video, you obviously know, dude, I think Jaden Daniels is legitimately awesome. I think he should easily be a top five, top 10 pick. And looking at the teams in the top 10, I mean, we have the Bears. And of course, I think they're going to probably go with Caleb Williams. You know, that seems like a no-brainer. I haven't done the scouting on Caleb Williams yet, but I think Jaden Daniels is really awesome. Pick two, the Washington Commanders. Then you have New England. Then you go down to pick six. You have the Giants. And then you have Atlanta at eight. And then you have the Jets at 10, the Vikings at 11, Denver at 12, Vegas at 13. Like, all of these teams, I think, can easily either trade up or wait for Jane Daniels to maybe fall in that range and go after him. If I was any one of those teams, I would be doing anything in my power, anything to go after Jane Daniels this year. I think the kid is a special talent. I mean, he really reminds me of Jalen Hurts, but honestly, a Jalen Hurts that can actually read a defense. Both have some accuracy issues, but they still make up for it on the ground and with great, great balls when it matters. That's what Jalen Hurts is known for in the NFL, and I think Jaden Daniels can easily be a Jalen Hurts clone. And honestly, I think his upside's way higher.